Welcome back. Welcome in. This is Country Roads Confidential at Earsports.com. This is a Paramount podcast. I am Mike Casaza. Welcoming back Chris Anderson. Chris, we had a hot board for uh, the new owner and publisher of the website, in case he never came back. Um, it's good to see you, but I really had some ideas that I think people would have rally behind. Um, we had everybody from like the major conferences to mid-major replacements in mind, but there you are. How's vacation? It was lovely. Very, you know, I like to plan my vacations and go sit on a beach, have a couple of drinks, relax. My wife was in charge of the vacation this time. So I hiked, I think it was 60 some miles over the span of seven days. Um, I'm tired, but feeling better. Feels good. Got to see a lot of things I've never seen before in my life. So that would be great. My kids enjoyed it. And um, I'm just glad to hear you didn't have a handshake deal behind my back while I was gone. Are we going to do this? I mean, we're we're on here to discuss all these hot boards. Yeah, but also, I leave town. You joke about the hot board to replace me. I leave town, and we're, we're already in version 4.0 of this hot board. You just get hot board happy when I leave? I promised the people that we'd break it into tiers at some point. I think people were getting a little antsy with, like, the long running list. And I kind of wanted to do that just because it shows you, like, in real time how you went from a lot of possibilities to – you know, like an order. And then sure enough, like we, we kind of figured what it was going to do in the search function. You're going to have a long list. And then with game go time, you'd have to have a much shorter list to work with. That's pretty much what's happened. It sounds like we can get into all the details there, but why not emulate that with our board? So we have it split up now into starters, reserves, and benched. So the starters are your favorite to reserves are people who are there in case, you know, a starter's got to come out and the bench are people who it's just not going to happen. Um, not now, not for this reason, not for that reason. We'll start with the the handshake agreement, though, I guess, because, again, th- he was never out, but Mark Byington, the James Madison coach, is is certainly in the mix here, too. I think a lot of people are going to read that or hear that and say, wait a minute, I thought that was a no. It was not a no. Like, There's no doubt that West Virginia is aware of him and impressed by him. I just think to say that I, I just absolutely don't buy that on the beginning of March, like what, March 3rd, that they went to Harrisonburg and closed a deal with a guy who had not yet finished his regular season, competed in the conference tournament. Um, and he has since. So finished regular season, most wins in the country, longest winning streak in the country, won the Sun Belt again, got his team in the NCAA tournament. And that was the thing that people were holding against him. As long as he'd been a coach, Mark Byington never had an NCAA tournament bid. He had one postseason bid. And that was in the CBIs. So and now he's got two. He looks pretty good this season. And some people are falling off. So here's a guy who, again, was not the top, wasn't out of it. He's on a list. But now you take this guy out, you take this guy out, and this guy out. Well, now you're up a couple more rungs. And when you have conversations with people, that's someone who has coached long enough and has interviewed for a couple of jobs and gotten them. He knows how to talk. So when you interview a guy like that, he moves up. Um, and he's in it now. I would think that he is in that that top cut of possibilities, too. I just refuse to believe this has been done for three weeks. Like I just can't believe that West Virginia is keeping a search committee busy is handing off all the work from the search committee to an interview committee, is also interviewing coaches from other leagues and occupying the time of those coaches and their agents as a ruse to cover up the fact that they have already signed, sealed, and delivered Mark Byington before he really accomplished the important stuff. I don't think those pieces work together. I don't think that's crazy to say. I also don't think it's crazy to say that he's a a candidate and, and probably should be taken seriously at this point because his name is here at this point of the search, not by accident. Yeah, I, none of the handshake deal stuff made sense, like the timing wise, not not the fact that he's a candidate or anything like that. And we we you um, said as much at, at the time, like, again, you said March 3rd and on that day it was, hey, this guy's not out of it. He's just not the top option. And there has been no deal done, period, end of story. Um, and all of that is true. I mean, again, the, the the timing and everything, you just broke it down. It makes absolutely no sense that there was a deal in place, what, two and a half weeks ago. Um, you mentioned there interviews, and you said the term, this point in the search. What point are we at? Where 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 is West Virginia University in this search right now? Like, you know, when you watch like Cape Canaveral and they had the, 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 um, the launches, <clears throat> And the, the shuttle goes up and you're watching for a while and you're like, oh, cool, it's gone. And like they keep going back to the the, the control room and everybody's kind of like, Ugh. 
And there comes that point where I don't know what they do. They break the atmosphere or they hit a certain speed or whatever. And like the thrusters come off and they fall down and the, the rocket's going up. Um, and all of a sudden they go back to the control room and everybody's like, yes. And they're high fiving, chest bumps, all that stuff. Very cool scene. I think we're at that phase right now. We're like the boosters are off and this thing is on its own. It's moving. So they've gotten everything off the ground and moving and they feel pretty good about the trajectory. Are they high fiving and chest bumping right now? Probably not. They haven't really fixed this yet. They haven't hired anybody, but I would say that for sure they have talked to five individuals right now. Chris, the word interview is something that people just throw around. I found this to be really strange. Like some people will say they've interviewed because it sounds official. Like I've interviewed for this job. My client has interviewed for this job. And some people um, will use that to prop up their candidacy. And some people will not say they interviewed. I've had talks at the school because they're not getting the job and they know that. Why would you interview for a job you didn't get? Um, and that, that's just kind of a vernacular thing in this, from what I can tell from a couple of these coaching searches of the years, the interview is a very formal word that people are very careful to use. So I would say they've had talks with five for sure, I think here. Um, and it's the ones we kind of expect right now. Josh Schertz, Mark Byington, Darian DeVries. Actually, I'm going to go to four. And because uh, I don't know that they talked to Dusty May yet. Um, and Nico Medved from Colorado State. So four they have had discussions with is it face to face is it a zoom is it a facebook messenger chat is it facetime i hope not that's kind of cheesy but they can do something on teams or zoom like a video conference if they don't want to go all the way out to port collins for example um they've had a handful of them i'm, I'm gonna guess that it's more than four because they're at this point and some of these coaches are available because of time off but then you think about it chris the the search just started wednesday today's monday could knock out a couple a day. How many are they realistically going to talk to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Not going to be a, a much larger number than four. I would give you four for sure. And I think you're probably going to see a couple more soon. But I don't know when. They really want to talk to Dusty May. He played Saturday night, Saturday, and lost in the tournament final, no, semifinal for the AAC. When are you going to talk to him? Couldn't do it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday last week. Probably don't want to catch him coming off the floor after he lost in the semifinal. And then yesterday was probably really nervy for him because is his team going to make the tournament or not? They did. Would you expect West Virginia have, to have talked to Bryce Drew, another person that they think they'd like to get a word with? They played like 1130 Saturday night, uh, Eastern time. When are you going to talk to him? Probably haven't had a chance at yesterday. Maybe. So I think you're going to see probably things slow down just because as Baker mentioned on Wednesday, these coaches are getting ready for a life altering tournament or an NIT bid, it's just hard to talk to them. you got to wait till some of them lose. So you might see a team lose on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and hear about them soon thereafter. So I expect it to go dormant for a couple of days. Except, Chris, there have been some surprises, too, when it comes to Dusty May not getting the Ohio State job. Not that he was going to, but Ohio State goes interim. And then suddenly Josh Schertz, who, by my accounts, did well when he communicated with West Virginia, talked to West Virginia, he might take the St. Louis job and there's some tea leaves that we could try to read there, but at least four. And I bet you that number would double before long, maybe by the end of the week. He leaves. Are you indicating that maybe West for like shirts is okay. Let me ask it this way. Is St. Louis a better job than West Virginia? No, it's better than Indiana state. Right. For better sure. than Indiana state, not West Virginia. So maybe the tea leaves are saying, hey, shirts is a backup option-ish kind of thing, or West Virginia is just still too early in their search that they're still trying to figure everything out, I think, is the tea leaves. Are you laying those tea leaves out for me? Am I reading those correctly? I'll pick them up for you. We can do this. I was just trying to tease it a little bit so people don't click that red X. So here's the deal, I think, on this one here. He talks to West Virginia. Um, I think that he's got a pretty good agency right now in the in the – that, not a pun there, but he probably has a pretty good name out there in the coaching search field. He's going to be a candidate for a lot of schools. Does he use St. Louis to pressure? I don't know. That didn't seem like a great move for a Missouri Valley coach who probably really appreciates the process having come up from D2. I don't think he's leveraging or manipulating. He might very well be in talks there, but you kind of have to, if, you, if you're West Virginia and you don't think you can get Dusty May, you're worried because he might go to Ohio State or Louisville, right? I know things have changed, but just follow me here. If you don't think you can get him, you really focus in on Darian DeVries and Mark Byington. And you think, well, if it doesn't work out with these two, I know I can get Josh Schertz. What is Josh Schertz firing off right now? Is it a bit of a road flare? Maybe. 
Um, but also does Josh Schertz know like, boy, those are three guys in front of me at a high major job, probably not going to get it. And I don't want the music to stop and for my chair to be back in Indiana state. So is he being some somewhat proactive here and just takes the job because he knows that he'll have a good landing spot. It could be that too. So the tea leaves would be, here's a guy who knows how this game goes, knows he's got a good job waiting for him and knows that he's going to have, he's going to have to wait on three swings and misses ahead of him. And would that happen? Maybe, maybe not. Um, especially, and again, it would not be unusual in that in the coaching industry for coaches to know something about a job that he's not going to get or that a peer is going to get or a peer is not going to get. These these search firms and agents are kind of, um, they like to gossip sometimes and, and let things out to help everybody move along. He might know more than, heck, probably, I hope he knows more than we do right now. But it could be as simple as like looking at it and him saying like, boy, there's three big names above me. How am I going to get up there? Probably not going to happen. So hypothetical, conspiratorial, maybe. But I don't think it's too complicated sometimes to think about why would he do this when this option's over here? Maybe that option's not over there. Maybe he has to do this because that's the best move for him. All right. I got three, I got three more questions for you here. You can take them a couple different directions. The first one is uh Medved. Uh you said interview or interviewed in quotes. There were words. Fox words said spoke words at each other. <laughs> what what um the you know, he he wasn't part of the maybe the big four or so. He wasn't one of the starters. What, is anything changing with him? Has something changed with him over the last week? Or is that more of a, hey, he, he is a candidate. He's been on your list from the very beginning. He's just one of the candidates. He's got the ties. You got to talk to him and just see what he has to say and see if he impresses. Is that what this is? I think so. Just I, I, before you can put somebody in the drawer and move on, you probably need to, like, talk to the person. And, and you do that and you find out, wow, pretty impressive. This explains why he's been successful here. This thing he mentioned, it could work here. Wow, his his culture is great. It would work in our locker room. And some of those things you don't really know until you get inside. Like, you can watch a team play offense and defense and get a good feel for that. But how he builds a program, what he says to recruits, uh, what their pitch is for the transfer portal, you know, what they do before practices, team meals, just like that culture stuff. And Baker was pretty big on that Wednesday, too, about, you know, they had to find a way to ground zero get the culture going again here because this is such a strange year. I think everybody gets that. Um, is that, is that Medved's um, his big hook right now? Don't know, but why you had those conversations, you don't know about him and you want to figure out as much as you can before you move him up or move him down. I don't, I wouldn't put him in that top group right now, but that is an increase that like even last summer, people thought that that was a guy who was a good candidate for any type of a high major job because the way he'd, he'd moved along in his career and kind of built things and succeeded doesn't have a lot of postseason experience or success. I think people look at what happened this year and go, kind of what they expected to be, like a middle of the pack Mountain West team. But, oh, the Mountain West was good. It was, but they were middle of the pack on that too. So there, there's a curiosity about him and other coaches too. I just think that he, again, he wasn't out early, but he might have had an opening to talk. Um, and again, initial communications, how deep is a conversation? It might lead to a second one. It might lead to something more more forward in the process too but you don't even get to that point unless you have the initial one too fact finding mission probably more that than like a formal interview but somebody that you're not going to cross off list based on what happened in that conversation all right i'm going to add one more question in here because you mentioned the ren baker press conference while i was gone anything else that baker said there publicly that surprised you changed your mind anything you, you took from that that you're like oh Oh, I can't believe he said that. Or that's interesting. Really big on the fan support and how much that matters. And I think that sometimes we lose sight of that, but it probably does matter to coaches who are coming from the level that West Virginia is probably going to pull a coach from. You know, when they have 12,000 people on a, a Saturday night game in the snow against Baylor, it might have been a down year for West Virginia, but to have that support, I don't think a lot of people around the Big 12 or West Virginia are like, yeah, cool, let's throw a party, we'll order pizza. They got 12,000 people on a snowy Saturday. If you're coming from the Missouri Valley, the AAC, and you you top out at like you know 4,500 for a big game, that's going to sound impressive. And you start to think about, boy, I could do so much more if I have support. I can do this on campus. Uh, I can have a student section that does this. I can raise money for that. So that does, I think that people forget that sometimes. And to see him put that out there was really cool. Part of that answer too, Chris, was that he said on Wednesday, hours after telling interim coach he's not coming back, in the conversations we've had with agents and coaches, that has come up. So one, that means agents and coaches have, have said, hey, you got a great 
student section. You got great crowd support, great fan attendance numbers. Fine, whatever. That's secondary to the fact that they've already had conversations with the agents and coaches. I don't know if he meant to let that slip or if he let that slip on accident, but he definitely said that. And the other one was he he had data, Chris, about defense. And we said this before that they were going to so- search for like a defensive minded coach, a defensive identity. People are like, why? It's 2024. All the rules are changing for points and scoring and moving the guards and, and letting things be more offensive. And then there's the AD saying, we've got to have a defensive coach, period. That was kind of validating to to some of the, why are they talking to this guy? Why does he have a candidacy? Like Dustin Kearns eh, might be the best defensive coach on our list, right? Not going to get the job. But why was he on that list? Didn't do great things at the school. They won their conference regular season title, but they played defense like nobody's business. If you look at Mark Byington, not a great postseason resume. We went over that, but his team really plays aggressive defense too. Those are those are some explanations there that I think you can lean back and go, okay, I get that now. That otherwise you wouldn't have had before, if not for a, a press conference hours after letting your coach go. Pretty impressive. All right. So he's mentioned the things that they're selling them on, which leads me to my next question. I'm glad you mentioned you brought that up. Who's selling who? In these interviews right here. I mean, I, I know it's always a dance, a little bit of a mix of the school trying to sell to the coach and the coach trying to sell to the school. Is West Virginia still in a position here, despite that I'm waving my hands around all of this? One of your things, I stole that from you. Um, oh, good. Are they still in a position to sell? Like th- this is a high major job with a great everything. Are they still in that position? Sure. And that's a curiosity too here. You think about like search firms, they keep dossiers, so to speak, on on clients like coaches. Well, they also do the same thing for the schools because coaches will be clients of search firms. What does the one on West Virginia say? The job hasn't been open, like open since 2007. And Huggins got a day after John Beeline left. And I went over this too. Like the the Dockich hiring was so clumsy that they never realized that the house was on fire when it came to NCAA violations. Uh, they really hurried to get John Beeline in. And then you go back to like 1978 was the last time they had like a real coaching search. World's wildly different. So what's the dossier in West Virginia? So they're going to have to do some pitching. So that's why you see a lot of the data about, you know, the student support, you know, they're him, Ren Baker saying that they love their travel budget and they could do better with their assistant coaches and their, their coaching salary is good. Like, Really laid things out there where if you're Googling the West Virginia job and you want to see what the ADS said at the press conference, you can go to that one section that's been clipped probably and you can find out some of the things that are important too. So I think there is some of that because, again, what's the word on the West Virginia job? Nice practice facility, job in the Big 12. Okay, but there's more to it. So they have to do that and some of that selling. That's important too. There's not a lot of data about what this job has been in the market offering for. Like if you, you can go back and you can find real estate listings about what a house was purchased for and sold for so many years ago. You can't really find that on the WVU men's basketball job. It just hasn't been open for a while. And then number one, number two, I think this is important too. It's a, it could be a really good job for a coach. And you look at a guy who was just a force before. And again, this is like the Bob Huggins program. You know, he, he raised the money for the practice basketball practice facility. He did scheduling. Um, recruiting was weird, but that was his way with his contacts. Like so much of the program was wrapped around Huggins before. And now Baker is saying, I don't believe there's just one candidate for a job, one right candidate. If you have the support system around the coach, your coach can succeed, which is to me like a clear line of saying this is not a coach program. This is a basketball program that a coach can be really good at. So a lot of it is that, hey, they have these bells and whistles, these these accessories, these highlights, these luxuries. Gotcha. However, the coach can come in and enjoy that and really take off and go somewhere with this program because he can add to it. He can supplement it. He can put his system in place because everything around him should be in position to help him. I thought that was a, a pretty important point that he made there too. Probably a, an answer for this question, but also the one before too, now that I think of it. All right. Last question, Mike. You mentioned that we are in uh, what, phase two, second phase or whatever with the rocket taken off. The boosters have fallen off, but not quite at you know the point where everybody feels good. When is Ren Baker high-fiving everybody around the athletic department. How long until he gets an answer on this? He said final four. You know that? He said, like, I'd like to have it done by the final four. Hmm. I think that's realistic. And I would go under. I just think that they're going to have a, a, there's going to be some expediency here because 
you know, Iowa State's, excuse me, Ohio State's off the board now. I'm not sure how competitive Oklahoma State is going to be. Like, I don't think that they're they're going for the same people. I thought that initially, but some things initially are not what they seem to be right now. Like, they had the same search firm, West Virginia and Oklahoma State. So you wonder how much, like, cross-pollination is going on there, especially in the same conference. Uh, because what's what profiles for one Big 12 school might profile for another Big 12 school. And Oklahoma is more of a Big 12 school than West Virginia. No offense to West Virginia. I don't know, though. There's some crazy names out there for that job. Are they going to be, you know, outbidding or bidding against one another? I'm not sure. And then Louisville, I have no idea, Chris. <laughs> that one seems like it's off the map already right now or off the radar or off the reservation or whatever you want to say. Not sure. But again, they can spend more than West Virginia and Oklahoma State can perhaps combined. We'll see if they want to get a big name. So West Virginia might kind of be in its own lane right now. Not have to worry about what others do, but if one of those schools comes in and looks at one of their people, they're going to have to act fast because they don't want to get left out. And again, that was another part of what Baker said. Again, I'm going to use this line again. Like there's not just one coach. Uh, they, they think they've got a good enough program that he can sell and he can explain to a coach where if he is a second or third choice, it shouldn't be that he's a second or third choice. He's their other right guy for the job, just that he wasn't the person they called or offered. I would think though that the overrun of the final four is pretty important. I think they would want to move fast because it probably isn't fun for any of them. And then they can start putting their roster together. The portal's open. They can start looking at people. They can talk people out of the portal. Hey, stick with us. We like you. Um, or, hey, thanks for the memories. Here's your gold watch. You have those conversations now. That's better than later. So I would I would think that they're aiming for the Final Four for a reason, and I think that they should probably come underneath that. I'm just going to go and put that in the headline. Ren Baker refuses to hire Final Four caliber coach. WVU Hoops is doomed. That's the yeah. thing now, like all of a sudden if Drake is running people over and they're in like the final four and you're going, man, I can't believe the search is going on. Might yeah. be a reason, right? Yep. Uh, well, Mike, I think that that covers everything I wanted to know. You, you filled me in nicely from my departure while I was gone. Uh, for those of you who have not been gone or might be gone soon and want to keep up with all this, VIP is 50% off right now. I'm pretty sure it either, either ends tonight at midnight or tomorrow night at midnight. So Please don't wait. Get in there. Get on that deal. Don't be the guy that comes, you know, on Thursday and Mike drops hot board version 5.7 and you message me asking, where's the deal? Gone. Okay. So get in it while you still can. 50% off VIP. It's for an entire year. So you get not only this coaching search, all spring football, summer camps, official visits, all of next football season. All of next basketball season, so the first year of this new coach, all the transfer portal news, all the signing days, all the everything. So make sure you join in right now. That's a lot. That's kind of intimidating for me. Subscriber, that's really intimidating. You get a lot of stuff you have to read. And then yep. what, after a year you get Paramount? Is that right? Yeah, and then after a year you get Paramount Plus included. So pretty good deal. It's and it, 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 here you go. For those that are just interested in the uh I don't think I don't know if we're supposed to promote this part of it, but whatever. It's uh you can do monthly. There it's full price monthly right now. If you want a month to try to keep track of this hot board and all the coaching search, you can do full price monthly, which means Paramount Plus starts right now. So mm. it's another option for you if you're looking for if you're a little uh phobi uh, a little commitment phobic here and uh want a little short term with your sports. otherwise you gotta put up with us for a year, but as you said, <laughs> plenty of diversions to Kind of push right. us out to keep your mind occupied there. A lot coming up here. Um, certainly some some more news, maybe some reaction to this that we put out in the in the world right now. Football kind of sort of starts Thursday for the spring. Neil Brown press conference. They're on the field on Monday, and then spring game April twenty eighth. So um, there's still a baseball team in town. You see that one yesterday? Twenty five um, eleven. I so I pulled it up about halfway through because uh, Andrew was there covering it for the site and i went and i looked and i was like that did i pull that up wrong so this, the, the page that we pull up um has all the sports so i thought have i pulled up volleyball something because i saw the score yeah i was like that doesn't seem right but, spring volleyball <laughs> ooh, yeah, that's, not, that's wrong season that's they okay. ran into some ran into some good pitchers at ohio state and ohio state hit the ball really hard a bunch th throughout the weekend too so they um they yeah. need some bats in the lineup for sure and they got to figure out their pitching staff their pitching staff is has had good moments, um, had a great run for the bullpen, and then all of a sudden just couldn't get anybody out the last couple of days too. So weird. Um, good run early, but 
probably about where they are most seasons at this point. Maybe a little bit worse, a little bit slower, but think about who they're missing and who they don't have still. Yeah. Sooner the better getting them back too. So I don't know. We can piece that together as it happens. Baseball coverage, football coverage, coaching search coverage, transfer portal coverage, videos, podcast, just like this. We'll have more. I promise. Until then, I'm Mike Cassazza. And I'm Chris Anderson. We will talk to you then.